Hey, what's up, YouTube? Right, the Orange Ninja News coming right back at you. Yo, know, seven gigabytes equals 129 hours. That's at least that's what my device said. That's pretty cool, man. Just seven gigabytes will be 129 hours of recording. Hmm. Got a little room to play with today, then. <laughs> yeah, so what's up, YouTube? Today I think I'm gonna talk about the whole thing with um, the rules. I don't know. I don't even think too many people talking about it right now. Anyway, I like to be on the exclusive view when the uh, top YouTubers talking about the top topics. Some cats just be talking about some off the wall foolishness and arguing back and forth with each other. I'll be on some, you know, the top news topics stuff that's actually that people want to hear about that's what's up man so yeah that's gonna be my focus today to be basically about the rules for today and before i get into that i get into how my day was today what i had popped off and whatnot and yeah i could tell you now that going through utah and Idaho, also over there to uh, to Oregon, because I had a, I was there living that spot over in Oregon, man. All that area is like, right now I just got some snow and stuff. It's going to clear up in a day or so, so it ain't no biggie, but it's just like, you know, until that time, if you're traveling in the area, you just got to, you know, take your time and watch what you're doing. Don't get in a rush or nothing like that. Because uh, that's how it is when you're traveling in snow, you know. Whenever the whole key to staying safe in situations like that, just watch what you're doing. Kind of, you know, you ain't, in, you ain't trying to race through no snow or nothing like that. Because, of course, if you ever were to slam on brakes or snatch on the wheel or something, you're going to slide in the ice. So, if you're going at a nice little slow pace, you can uh keep better control of yourself and be able to control your vehicle yeah so that's one little public announcement on that one <laughs> public service announcement on that one help yeah, people out that's what's up yeah so that's how my my little uh daily travel for today was going yeah so the like i say my name my main story that i want to talk to y'all about is uh you know the rules yeah so the whole thing was basically over the tabloids because that was the main thing they kept talking about saying that um uh they got tired of the way that uh prince harry and uh princess megan it was basically like they uh tired of the way the media keep betraying them and it's like the way they was covering them they wasn't covering everybody else so you know what i'm saying they just want to want some more respect on their name and whatnot and i don't see nothing wrong with them going back and forth from canada back to the uk i mean they try to just stay out of the stay out the spotlight and stay out the tabloid so and and you can tell by that whole thing like uh the the tabloids they was worried about was the tabloids in the UK. They're not worried about um, over this way as much, and that was that was the whole thing because it just you know just in the way they would uh, portray whenever they talk about uh, Prince William and his wife, and then you know it was always something positive, and then when it when it would be. Uh, now, Prince Harry and Princess Meghan, then you know, be some, yeah, look what she's wearing, or this or that, you know what I'm saying? They get tired of that type of crap. They're like, hey man, you know what? I'm gonna just uh fall off for a minute, get out the, get out the spotlight, kind of chill. So, I mean, I could, I could understand that, man. And uh, maybe I don't know that much about the whole, uh, the way the title part worked, but isn't when they have uh when it's a prince and he gets married then the woman he's married to automatically will be referred to as a princess if he's a prince 
then what's his wife? You know what I'm saying? So it's always like all you hear is uh, Megan Merkel, Megan Merkel. They never say uh, Prince is Megan or Prince is Merkel or something. I mean, now on the other hand, with his brother, <laughs> his brother's wife, it'd be different. You know what I'm saying? So I can I kind of understand that, man. I don't, I don't think they was really uh, tripping on that part. But I know the whole thing was more like uh, from the royal side was, okay, people was like, uh, well, if you step off and you have to uh, give up your titles and you have to uh, fend for yourself, you wouldn't be able to uh, live off some of the royal monies and all that other good stuff, you know what I'm saying? So that was like talking about the business aspect of it. So. Yeah, I, I get that part too. I understand that. So, I mean, uh, seems like they got it hashed out though. Uh, lately, you know, they've been in the in the talks with the with the royal family, see how they can make this thing work for all parties involved. So, um, yeah. So I'm gonna have to get deep into this thing in a second. Hold all right. So I did the research. Just like I said, I was going to research into into the whole subject matter because I don't like unlike some of these other cats, I don't just be talking, flapping my gums, and saying whatever. And I don't know what I'm talking about. I actually uh, take time out whenever I get a chance and read up on things and research about topics before I even talk about it. But uh, um, I already figured out why why she won't be called uh, a princess and it's it's more than just you know what I'm saying it's more than uh, you know who like who or uh, some kind of political thing in the background or something like that or just that people don't like her but it's actually the the custom, um, it says a series of complex and ancient laws is uh, what it's about because uh, basically she would have had to actually come from royal blood already and a lot of that stemmed from back in the day when it was doing more of that type of incest crap where it was, you know, having the cousins marry each other and all that type of weird stuff. But you already had to be uh, in the same bloodline. In other words, already related, which is uh, kind of weird, gross. Why would you be related to each other already? <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, so, yeah, it, it stems from, uh, from that type of stuff. Uh, it says, by the standards of British royal protocol, uh, you have to have royal blood, and the arcane rules mean that, uh, that just like uh, her sister-in-law, uh, Catherine Middleton, you know, when, when she got married, she auto automatically became her royal highness. Princess Williams, Princess William of Wales, and that's because uh, she also uh, the Captain Middleton. She also wasn't of a, a, a royal bloodline where she could be called princess. So became her royal highness, Princess William of Wales, and. So, you know, it's the same thing. So, her actual title is uh, Princess Henry of Wales. I mean, yeah, that, that would be um, B. Megan's title. It's, yeah, it's, it's a, I don't know, it's a weird kind of custom type deal. So, that's what was, uh, that, that was up with that part and let's see uh, the, the royal blood meant that the queen's late sister Margaret was entitled to call herself Princess Margaret 
Likewise, the queen's daughters is Princess Anne and her granddaughters are Princess Beatrice and Princess Eugene, you know, because they are already of the royal bloodline, you know. But that's when you're already born of the royal bloodline. And like us outsiders, we would just figure, okay, if you get married, you know what I'm saying? Because that's just the way it was like... Uh, when they, whenever you read the, uh, you know, books as kids and stuff like that, when uh, when a woman married the prince, she was automatically the princess, but that's not how it worked in real life, <laughs> which is, you know, it's actually uh, different rules and stuff to it and all this. You have to be born of the royal bloodline and this and that, and it's, it's you know, it's, it's kind of weird. So whenever they just call her... Uh, um, Megan Markle instead of Princess May, they actually just be it. You know, that's when people are just being technical because it's just like uh, um, Harry and uh, Prince Harry and Prince William's um, mother, uh, Diana, uh, actually, technically, she would just be uh, known as. Diana Spencer, if they was doing a, you know, if they were just saying technically, and she wouldn't be called Princess Diana, but, you know, all the regular people, all the commoners just would call her Princess Diana, you know, they, they didn't really pay attention to all the, the whole technical type stuff. Yeah, you just knew that uh, she was married to the prince, so you automatically called her princess, you know. So, yeah. And that's the that's the whole thing with that. The you know, without getting too too bogged down into the whole technicalities and everything. But uh, you know, I, I seen that part and I was like, Oh, okay. So it's like, yeah, well legally actually, you know, it is just Megan and not Princess Megan because of this this uh law from thousands of years ago whatever or not but hey you know it is what it is but uh everybody still knows she's married to prince harry regardless so actually her official title is megan duchess of sussex and that's because uh prince harry's official title is prince harry duke of sussex so when you you know when you get into all the whole technical parts and all the uh you know get out want to get all technical with it <laughs> you know what I'm saying get into all the all the more intricate details and be all technical and the actual uh down to the actual title and everything like that so that's what it is um. And as far as the other parts that I was talking about, like uh, them, them wanting to uh, get away from the media and stuff. I mean, I still, like I say, I see why that is. Some people think that they're just uh, being spoiled brats and, and don't want to want to just, you know, be part of the system and want to just run off and do their own thing but i kind of you know i kind of get it man like i say it's that the media can be can be rough on people when they want to be and especially if it's a lot of a lot of rough uh negative style stuff they keep coming out with i mean you you see what happens in the media when they uh when they go after the people i mean uh, you know, you could pull up examples from stars right here in the U.S. When, uh, when for whatever reason, whether they fall off or they become a target in the media, and then they just start printing all types of stuff about them, man, just go in on them. So I mean, you know, they was they was getting tired of that type of type of backlash. They like, yo, skip this. I'm tired of these cameras following us around, and instead of printing something 
you know, something decent and something nice, how you think they would print about rules is always some foolishness and getting disrespectful. So I get it, man. You bounce to Canada, nice little secluded area where you can chill. Yeah, I get that. Especially you got a kid with you. And there's a another thing that was reported was about the uh about the uh son Archie. I mean it was reported that uh that her sister in law uh when she had a chance to first hold Archie, she refused. And it was like, yo, you don't want to hold my baby. What the hell's up type deal. I don't know how the truth that part was, but, you know, that was also, uh, you know, that was also made a news headline at one time. So, you know, if that's true, that's kind of, that is like a slap in the face type this. I mean, if you're having beats like that, you know, that's just how that go. It's crazy. Um, yeah, so I don't want to get too much into the into the technical stuff. So I'll try not to dig too deep into all the uh, different titles and the technical stuff. But um, at the same time, uh, we know. Uh, that the negotiation went on. Uh, I guess that's what you, you could call it when um when Harry had to when Harry and his wife had to talk with the family like, hey, listen, this is what we want to do. We're trying to take some time off, be ourselves. Yes, of course, we're still down with the family. You know, it's family. We always going to be down with the family, regardless of what's going on. But we just need a break and. Now they had to um, the, the give his brother William uh, another role and switch his, his name up. Well, you know, switch up his duties now because of this. And Prince William was given a new role as Harry and Meghan moved to Canada. Prince William has uh, given a role by the Queen as his brother Prince Harry moves to Canada with wife Meghan. The Duke of Cambridge has been made the Lord High Commissioner to the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland. Dang, that's a, I don't know, that's that's kind of a long-winded role. Um, but, yeah, so... So uh, he has been. So his his brother William now has been made the Lord High Commissioner to the General Assembly of the Church of Scotland. Man, that he has some cool titles though, man. Man, I need I need a cool title like that for my truck driving. High Commissioner truck driver to the. High Commissioner truck driver to the north, no, no, the southwest. Northwest got too many mountains, man. I'm gonna be man to be the High Commission truck driver of the southwest of North America. The big baller known as Rod D of Orange Ninja News. Yeah, but yeah, they, they have some real cool titles like that. Um, actually, as a rule. You, you could hold different titles because uh, Elizabeth II holds many titles among them Queen of Canada. Canada see her on coins and the government says she's made more royal tours there than any other Commonwealth country that they have. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. So, I mean, you know, he has that title. He have other different titles too just like the, the queen has different titles so yeah that's that's pretty cool and um but it but to get into the whole uh uh canadian thing um it says when the grandson moves to canada he is likely to find himself facing the country's immigration process as a commoner just like anyone else so just 
just because he's uh even though he's royalty he still got to go through the whole immigration process like a commoner hmm yeah i don't get that part because canada is part of their uh commonwealth and they go back and forth all day uh you know they got planes back and forth from there all day long so yeah I don't get that part, even though, it, you know, it's going to do, instead of short visit, do some more long-term stuff. But, hey, it's whatever, it's uh, however they got their little rule set up for Canada. Okay, I see a little um, article that says, News that Prince Harry and Meghan the Duchess of Sussex plan to step back. Oh, man, that's that part around the Duchess of Sussex. What? Yeah, yeah, her title rhymes, man. The Duchess of Sussex. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so uh, the Duchess of Sussex plan to step back from their royal duties and spend at least part of their time in Canada has promoted the question, how can the pair gain financial independence in a country where it appears neither has the right to live and work? In order to become legal permanent residents of Canada, they would need to apply through our normal in immigration processes. Uh, a spokeswoman for Canada Immigration Agency said this. However, members of the royal family are not required to seek authorization to come and stay in Canada as visitors. Yeah, I would hope not. They are royals. She did not respond to questions on whether Harry and Meghan could stay indefinitely as visitors. As tourists traveling on British or American passports, they could stay in Canada for up to six months, but then they'd be expected to leave and without work permits, which can be complicated to get without job affairs, they will have difficulty earning a living. Uh, so they would need work permits to stay longer than six months man good luck at that man their roles they ain't gonna be working no regular job like a commoner i'm just come on man that's ridiculous anybody anybody dumb enough to think um you'll see some roles working regular jobs like you just go and walk in the kitchen and see one on washing dishes or something and yeah you there's something wrong with your mind. You got you, your your reality factor in your brain ain't working. That that part just cut off. I mean, it rolls. They no, they will not be working no regular damn job like a regular person, man. It makes no sense. I mean, that would be uh, if you ever see something like that, that's a photo op. Had taken a couple of pictures, but uh, other than that, yeah. Yeah, you daydreaming on that one. That that it never happened as far as them uh having about work at a real job and have a work permit and going all the way to the bottom from rules. Come on, man, get out of here. That's funny. Uh, it says Harry and Meghan playing the future in Canada, seen like seen as a friendly environment for the royal family. But yeah, I, I know they always like Canada anyway. And yeah, it made me laugh about the whole uh, citizenship thing that they're talking about with with Canada because it's like, okay, these are rich people. Make no mistake, these are rich people. They got rich people problem. You got uh, we got jokers out here trying to pretend like. They regular people with regular people problem. Like you just go and pop up and see one of them working at a bar or something or uh cleaning houses or washing dishes or something. Come on man. Get the hell out of here, man. But let's let okay, let's just pretend like they got regular people problem and I read this little silly uh silly behind article <laughs> where it's basically pretending like they got regular people problem. Well, I'm gonna get into it. 
Much could depend on Megan. She might already have permanent residency after working seven, seven years in Toronto as an actress in a USA Network legal drama, Suits. And yeah, I would. That's what I would think because she already would have a uh, a work visa because she's already been there working and living when she was uh. Um, working on a, working on a, uh, as an actress on a, on a show there already, already living there, working there on the daily, so I don't get that part, but if not, she could qualify for permanent residency under a visa program for people with experience in an artistic, athletic, or cultural field, so she could get under a, a decent, uh, a different visa program if uh, she don't get under the work program one. Uh, and if she has permanent residency, Megan could sponsor Harry through family sponsorship. If not, she could add Harry as a dependent on her visa application. <laughs> Isn't that something, man? Yeah, that would be funny as hell. It'd be like, yo, like, <laughs> you know, good and well, can be so damn happy to have the rules there. They ain't, they ain't worried about all that technical stuff like they did commoners and stuff. Another option would be to apply through an express entry program for skilled workers. That program is based on a point system which considers work experience, education, age, and language ability. Applic applicants begin losing points after their 30th birthdays, so Megan, 38, and Harry, 35, would do well to get their application in as soon as possible. A problem for the prince, he went straight from Eaton College to officer training at the Royal Military Academy, Sandhurst, so he doesn't earn higher education points. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's uh, some more to, you know, that's uh, more about how us commoners, you know, get visas and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure if you're a royal, because I know cats that's not royals that uh, get visas up there all the time, so if Anybody really think a royal has was going to have problems? There has to be way more going on. If a royal has any kind of problems getting a visa at Canada, it's some kind of political or some foolishness or trickery going on in the background. So I really don't see them having to worry about all the little silly steps like that and getting into some kind of foolishness with it. And let's see. They could even request it on humanitarian or compassionate grounds, a route available to foreigners working on temporary permits or asylum seekers who have maintained solid work records in Canada. So, yeah, I just stop it right there because, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's just foolishness. Whoever thinks they have to um, do some work visa type crap. Uh, come on, man. Yeah, if, I, if a role, if a role was, uh, I seen a role working at a regular job, working at the same job I'm working with, driving trucks or something, I'm like, man, get your rich self out of here, man. You're too rich for this junk, man. Quit playing, man. <laughs> uh, you slowing up my work day playing and junk, man. Too rich to be out here. Get the heck off. Man, who do think they who think they need a damn damn work visa or some crap like that? Uh, have to get a regular job. Man, you done bumping your head. I ain't gonna waste time reading the rest of that stupid article talking about a damn work visa. Like a damn rich person got to worry about working. Man, please. But yeah, but so but the whole um doing the Canada thing is real, so we already know that. Um, and they they really like Canada, and you know it's just 
laid back, quiet, they're trying to be secluded and chill by themselves for a minute, which like I say, I have zero problem with that. I think that is that is really good for them. Just uh be able to the to, to get away from the paparazzi for a while. Be able to chill and relax basically. Yeah, so the go ahead and wrap that whole story up is basically um we did the whole Canada move. I think it's a real nice move. If you want some peace and quiet, do that. Do your thing, your royalty, you know. Um people gonna you gonna always have haters. Me and myself I'm a congratulator, not a hater, so I say you need some peace and quiet, do your thing. Do what you gotta do. The rest of us, we just on the outside looking in, and I know it's it's a lot of a lot of hate that uh, Megan Markle was getting. They say you have to do a lot of other stuff, which uh, to us, I wouldn't go into all that. I mean, but as far as uh, like I say, that's a a good little move, that Canada move, and you know, the main thing you learn from me today is. Why the the title of uh, Princess uh, Princess Megan isn't said more often? It's because of the technicality. But at the same time, if you looking at that, that in that sense, then you would have to quit saying Princess Diana because uh, it was the same technical rule with her. Huh? Think about that. That's deep. So well, you can't say. Princess Meg, because not of royal blood. Okay, so why are you saying Princess Diana when she was under the same rule? Mm, okay, hold it now. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, so yeah, that's what I'm all about. I do my research, man. I'm just talking, jack my jaws, man. I, I I do. I look it up. I do the research and actually know what I'm talking about when I talk about it. So make it a, a better little news talk show for everybody you know what i'm saying you know so that said we're going to get off of that article but uh much love to them you know and they they always be royals even if they step back or however they want to play it you know it's still going to be royalty and that's what that is yeah so now let's talk about the, the chinese new year um it's the year of the rat, so anybody that's born this year, well, anybody born this year is a rat. They do their thing, you know, they do their thing a little, a little different. It's, it's just like the, the horoscopes that we do. Like, I'm a Scorpio, that's a scorpion, so, I mean, it's the same, same thing, they just do the the whole the whole new year the whole new year thing and have uh you know you got different animals horse rat uh i don't know will they have a panda I, I don't you know just different animals you know what i'm saying well i know a horse and i know they got a horse a rat a dog probably okay I, I don't know, give me the line, I'll look it up for y'all. But at the same time, the bottom line is they got different animals. And this year just happened to be this new year, 2020, just happened to be the year of the rat. Yeah, I ate at a at a Pan Express. Got a little thing that says Happy Lunar New Year. And it's kinda like a little jigsaw puzzle thing on the inside of it. Pretty cool. That's how I remembered to say something about the about the Lunar New Year. And as far as the as far as it being a rat, well what they say is that the rat is a uh, real cunning, is fast, it knows how to survive, uh, and it populates really quickly. And so even though know, people might hate the rat, the rat is uh, still a strong survivor. 
regardless. So, I mean, when you look at it that way, yeah, it is. You know? When man's been trying to kill rats forever and those jokers still be living, so, I mean, that's, they're pretty, they are pretty uh, fast and pretty smart. To survive this damn long and still thriving. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The damn things. Like they say, what, at the, at the end of the world, I mean, some of the last things left on the earth is the rats and the roaches, man. <laughs> the damn things survive anything, man. What the hell? Yeah, but happy Chinese Lunar New Year to everybody. Maybe, uh, Many blessings in your future for this year, 2020, as we start to get it in. All my friends. Yeah, like I promised yesterday, I'm going to come with a lot of different news articles today. Kind of playing catch up because it's uh, a couple of different news articles I want to do. But I didn't get a time, get a chance to do them because being busy. Uh, working and doing other stuff and into other different types of projects where I didn't really get to get into it yet so today uh, I'll be getting into it uh, playing, playing catch up so uh, I got a little time to spend on the day I'm gonna go hard and you know, you're gonna like the show man it's gonna be deep uh, I'm gonna come from uh, my my perspective and you know what I'm saying? We're going to talk about it. It's news talk. All right. Well, let's get into it then. Yeah, what's up, YouTube? How you going? I'm back at this Rod D of Orange Ninja News, man. Yeah, I had uh, just seen the story of the Hawaiian shooting. Yeah, I had, I had slept on that. I was catching up on my movies and stuff, watching. Watching a couple of movie apps, just uh, catching up on that. Um, yeah, yeah, but I, I slept on the story. I didn't even know that went on, but obviously Sunday in Hawaii, they had a shooting. And I see a story says the suspect may have used the landlord's guns. And it's out of Honolulu, Hawaii. And the thing that strikes me about it is that they also got that, they had that um, protest in Virginia where everybody showed up and, you know, was in favor of the guns and, I don't know, it's a lot of back and forth for that. So, there's always going to be two sides to the story, two sides to the coin, you know, be a lot of back and forth. But it seemed like this guy, he didn't have the gun legally anyway, you know. He was uh, getting guns how a criminal does, getting guns the illegal way. So, I'm digging to the story. The suspect who fatally shot two police officers in the Diamond Head area Sunday shouldn't have had access to guns. Jerry Hanno, age 69, had temporary restraining orders filed on him by neighbors in police and he had previously sent him to get mental health evaluation but hawaii news said that the uh, landlord may have had dozens of weapons in the home and that's what they're thinking they're thinking that uh he just got hold of some of his landlord's weapons lois kane is still is still missing following Hanno's crime spree Sunday, and it's feared she's dead. Her husband, Raymond Kane, had a large number of registered guns, and when he died in 05, it's not clear what happened to them. And that, that's what happens sometimes, man. Uh, people will sell guns, too, like, you know what I'm saying, but you wouldn't put no papers on it or whatever. You just selling it in the street so you'd be like yo i don't know what happened to the guns i mean yeah, i know the guns was there i don't know what happened to them because 
you know, it's, it's surprising. It's not, well, maybe they got stolen or this or that. It's just, oh, I don't know what happened to them. And that's usually what you hear when somebody just uh, sell them off in the streets. You know, I'm not jumping to no conclusions or uh, saying that I know what happened. I'm just looking from the outside. But I'm just saying as far as the wording, that's what you usually hear when it's somebody selling guns in the streets. Okay. On Tuesday, police officers confirmed to Hawaii News now that they found two sets of remains, those of a man and a woman, in the rubble of a diamond head property. So, most likely it was the criminal and um, the victim, that lowest that they said they was looking for. Police believe that Hanno apparently killed Kane, stabbed a woman who lives on the property, then ambushed the officers who responded before setting the fire that quickly spread. Which was messed up, because I've seen uh, pictures of that. I mean, that was a pretty bad fire. And... The fact that he just went all out, like he was trying to kill everybody, even trying to kill the police, trying to kill ladies, trying to kill himself. I mean, this this dude went on some weird old uh, murder, suicide type joints. He went all out. I don't know, man. And it says, from my understanding, the rubble is probably close to a foot deep. So to sift through all that is... There's a monumental task, Police Chief Susan Ballard said Tuesday. Meanwhile, investigation to handle Ballard Rampage in his past continues. Yeah, so that's, that's what was taking them so long. You know, they had a lot of stuff to dig through and whatnot. But as far as the investigation into his past, it seemed like that's how they, how they always do, man. They be like fooling up. Okay, well, what went wrong? And, and yeah, he was a he was a quiet guy. He didn't have any friends. You know, they always go through all that. It's like, man, listen, this was some weird, weird cycle. And too bad that you know people got killed for the for the cops could take them down. It's just yeah, it's just a sad situation all the way around. But you know, a long, drawn out type of, you know what I'm saying, try to point the blame like somebody else is at fault. There ain't nothing nobody could do, but the guy should have just not killed nobody is what, what should have happened. Well, we had less rules on the book where the cops could just shoot him just because just he looked like he going to do some crazy shit, you know? That's the only other way. Nothing would have happened. And... Yeah, so that was that was a crazy story. I seen that, and I was like, "Man, what is going on now, Hawaii?" Because Hawaii's, you know, more laid back. It's where you go to relax and chill, go for vacation. You know, you're thinking more of a just all out, all around laid back atmosphere. Then it goes on to talk about the storage unit. It says. Hanno tried to rent a storage unit at Safekeeper Storage and asked whether he could store firearms there. And the person from that place was like, he was asking me, he wanted to store guns. And I told him, we don't store guns here. So he said, we don't store guns here, sir. And that's when his attitude started to change. So... And Chris Uly, the owner of Safekeeper Storage, was uh, uh, knew something was up with him right then. Well, you know, he don't know the whole deal with the guy, so he just knew that the guy was uh, trying to do too much, you know what I'm saying? But that in itself, you know, uh, couldn't alert him enough to know that the guy was uh, flipped out and was going to do something evil or nothing like that, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. But I just want um, to dig into that story because I didn't, I, you know, of course, that day I was kind of uh, watching movies and just chilling. I wasn't even watching the news that day, so I didn't even get to hit that up. So that's a, a recap on the whole Hawaiian shootout. All right, so next we got 
Antonio Brown. He's still in the news today. A uh, little thing about his, uh, about his, about him posting bail. And I'm seeing that news report today. And they got a little, little thing where he was, uh, running out the jail. He posted his bail. He's like, man, I'm up out of here. I don't blame him for running. What the hell? Yeah, I think them, I think those folks won't on Antonio Brown. Uh, if anybody's not familiar with the NFL football player, Antonio Brown, he's been in the news a lot, but not for good stuff. It was like a, a lot of controversy and stuff. Um, uh, all I can say is when you have certain powers that be that's after you for whatever reason, you know, whether they don't like your attitude or whatever was going on with them, because I don't see why due to be in the news that much and how that many people hating on him. I mean, he's just a NFL player like any any other NFL player. I mean, either you like him or don't like him, and you keep it pushing. I mean, God, dog, this guy's getting like, every time he cough, man, he's got headline news about this guy. I'm not understanding I say, I, I guess when piss off the wrong people or certain people uh, don't like you or something. This, this is weird. Let me see. I'm, I'm going to read a, a smaller tidbit of a news article that uh, just came in about him. It says, during a court hearing, the former NFL star who makes an appearance in uh, an anti, anti-suicide smock has been ordered to go through drug and alcohol testing as well as mental health evaluation. So, yeah, so he was ordered to go through the drug and alcohol testing as well as mental health evaluation. Hmm. Yeah, it's not saying that he did have that he was on drugs, it just says that he had to go through the drug and alcohol testing. Yeah, so that's that's not really saying nothing. I mean, I didn't say he got popped with any kind of drugs or anything like that. Just that they test him for him. Yeah, you get random drug tests at a job. That don't mean you're doing drugs, that just means they did the drug test. So that part ain't saying nothing. Antonio Brown just wants to have some peace after spending a night behind bars. He was released from Broward County Jail on Friday, January 24th, after posting his bond and wasted no time to get out. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, that's just happened. As it says, Friday, January 24th. So that was yesterday, so that just happened. After posting his bond and wasted no time to get out of the place to avoid reporters waiting outside, little did he know he ran in the opposite direction and was all captured on camera. Rocking a turquoise suit, he was accompanied by his attorney, Eric Schwartzreich. Schwartzreich. Yeah, yeah, it looked like the name Schwartzreich. He was... He was accompanied by his attorney, Eric Schwartzreich, who told reporters that he had advised his client not to make any public comments about his arrest. Brown then bolted down the stairs outside the building and began running into the parking lot of the courthouse, only to be told he was going the wrong way. Well, so the man was going the wrong way. Ha uh-huh. ha. Yeah, 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 that's crazy, man. Mm-mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's when, that's when dude got to take his money, do good investments, and kind of just disappear from the scene, man. Just try to, try to get out the public eye, try to, hell, probably move to a, to a nice little quiet island somewhere, man. You know, them folks want you, man. This is, uh, yep. Mm-hmm. I don't know who he pissed off. Brown initially ignored him before circling back and scolding his attorney. Go get in the car, bro. I don't need you to tell me anything. Get in the car. He then repeated, get in the car. I don't need you acting like my 
with chaperone. Mm-mm-mm. Brown is facing charges of felony burglary with battery, burglary of a unoccupied. Uh, yeah, he's getting criminal mischief stemming from a Tuesday incident outside his home in which he allegedly assaulted a moving truck driver. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but they're not saying enough of what actually, what actually went on, because whenever you, whenever you're a rich dude living in a mansion, and you get a charge like burglary or something, it's like, it, come on, the guy. Okay, I can see if he was a poor person living on the streets and he tried to break into somebody's house or something. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah, he gets a burglary charge. But when you're rich, you live in a gigantic mansion, and the only charge they could get on you is burglary. Okay, what really happened? What are we talking about? The guy's rich. He's not some punk burglar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So if you start off lying or just start off with some BS charges... Yeah, that makes me. That only makes me think. Okay, if the if they lying about that part, then what else are they lying about? Why are we Why are we even BSing, man? What's What's really going on here? And then later on, when they say, "Oh no, nah, see what really happened." Yep, yeah, man, it's a little too late for that because you already started off lying about everything, man. Putting the man on some weird ass burglary charges and stuff like that. No, what What really was actually going on, man? <sighs> So if you, you expect me to think a guy that's living a lifestyle that this guy's with multi this guy's a multi millionaire and you uh want me to believe that he's got on some ski mask and hanging out in some <laughs> you know what I'm saying? hanging out in some bushes waiting to break in people's houses or something. Like what 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 are we really talking about here, man? Yeah, I know he pissed the wrong people off or something, man, because, you know, this guy be catching charges that you never hear about a rich person. Like, yo, come on, man. Really? He is now required to wear a GPS monitor and turn over his passport and firearms. In addition to that, Brown has been ordered to go through drug and alcohol testing as well as mental health evaluation. However, his attorney believes that Brown isn't mentally ill. And this part is what his attorney said. I don't think there's any mental health issues with him. Yep. Yeah, see that part right there, the whole mental mental health issues. That'll be from uh, the ultra the ultra fans in the damn NFL at uh and be like, yo, he did my team wrong, or this or that, or why he didn't come to my team. And he must be crazy. <laughs> or he said this or did that, dude must be crazy. And then that leaks onto your personal life. So whenever anything else goes on, then everybody's going to say, yeah, this guy's crazy and mental health. Now, if he's really, now if he's really a burglar, a multi-millionaire burglar, that turns into a, to a, a cheap $20 burglar from a multi-millionaire, yeah, then it would be mental health. But come on, man. What are we really talking about? Let's get out of this. Uh, Antonio Brown's life right now is a reality show. He is misinterpreted and misunderstood. He's not guilty of these charges. Yep, that's what I said before. As soon as I seen the charges, I was like, uh, come on, man. If we're going to lie on somebody and make up some kind of weird-ass charge, make up something realistic. You know, don't just make up the first silly shit that comes to your head. And then everybody's looking like, okay, I'm supposed to believe this one, right? That's, oh, man. But it, and then you have his lawyer saying, okay, look at the charges. What, what are we talking about here? Attention. That's exactly what his lawyer is saying. 
he didn't he did not commit a felony battery in this case well i didn't even go into the felony battery stuff because i didn't even see that charge yet i just seen the one where they were saying he was a burglar <laughs> like yeah really uh, uh so the whole felony battery i have to look into that one but in this case when all the facts come out you will see he will be vindicated and he will be found not guilty that was that was his lawyer quote from his lawyer saying that uh he'll be found not guilty yeah so that's the whole antonio brown deal that's going on and my thing is if you're an ultra nfl fan that feels some way about the dude you know just be realistic yo it's still a human being man <laughs> They'll crucify him, the dude just because, uh, you know, whatever, however he um, might not play for a team that you want him to play for or yeah, whatever he did on the field or some kind of jump, man. There's a difference between, between a game and somebody's actual life, man. So that's kind of that's weird. Hopefully dude be able, once he get out of this mess, you know, Hopefully he go somewhere and just kick back and stay out the spotlight and make sure he kind of just seclude himself away from people for a little while. Like disappear for a minute. He, that, that's one cat that needs a vacation right there, man. So, all right. So, man, that's basically the update on uh, the football player Antonio Brown and what was popped off yesterday. And... We'll get up into the next story right about now. Uh, sadly, uh, Kobe Bryant and his daughter was in the break. Uh, rest in peace to Kobe. Um, he didn't have that long after he retired. So that, that kind of hits hard to everybody because the man just retired and, uh, from the NBA and he could have, you know, he was just, uh, living a regular life relaxing after all that all those years of working in the nba and stuff to be able to retire and just chill and relax for for a while you know that's good uh yeah that, that was real tragic um accident uh we got i read a little snippet of the news it says the helicopter carrying kobe bryant and eight other passengers that crashed into the hillside in Southern California on Sunday was in a climbing left turn about 2,400 feet high before it dove into the ground. So, that's messed up, man. The pilot had only moments before contacted air traffic controllers to say that he had begun a climb to go above the layer of clouds present. Chopper went down and Calabasas, about 30 miles northwest of downtown Los Angeles, after departing John Wayne Airport in Orange County at 9.06 a.m. The first 911 call reporting the crash was received at 9.47 a.m. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's messed up. So, yeah, it's uh, definitely true that uh, Kobe and his... Uh, daughter has passed is on a there's on the flight uh it's coming from the airport and they had a pilot helicopter yeah it's messed up um an air traffic controller told the pilot he was still too low level for the flight following meaning the aircraft was below the level at which it could be picked up by radar due to the area's hilly terrain. The audio came from recorded, recordings posted on liveatc.net, which has partial audio of the communication between the pilot and the air traffic controllers. Mm. Air traffic controllers noted poor visibility around Burbank, just to the north and Van Nuys to the northwest. After holding up the air helicopter for other aircraft, they cleared 
and proceed north along Interstate 5 through Burbank before turning west. Follow U.S. Route 101 to Ventura Highway. Shortly after 9.40 a.m., the helicopter turned again toward the southeast and climbed to more than 2,000 feet above sea level. It then descended and crashed into the hillside at about 1,400 feet, according to the data from the flight radar 24. When it struck the ground, the helicopter was flying at about 160 knots. That's, a, that's 184 miles per hour and descending at a rate of more than 4,000 feet per minute. That's about 45 miles per hour. The flight radar 24 data showed. Authorities said that nine people were aboard the helicopter and presumed dead. Brian and an all-team basketball great who spent his entire 20-year career with Los Angeles Lakers was among the victims. Man, that's bad, man. Uh, yeah, that, he was he was an overall good guy, man. So it's it's real bad to hear something like this happening. So uh, rest in peace to Kobe and his daughter. Yeah, so that's going to be it for today's edition of Orange Ninja News Talk. So yeah, been fun hanging out with y'all. Starting off right now, this is. Rod D of Orange Ninja News. Uh, it's been fun. Uh, I'll see y'all next time. And if you want to get the notifications, just uh, hit that subscribe button and have your notifications on. And every time I come out with a new video, it'll pop up for you. All right, then. So, like I usually say, right about this time, y'all be blessed. And Hey!